Yeah, the conversation is going to start with like our feet. Okay. And then uh, because as human beings, everything pretty much starts with the contact of the foot onto the ground surface. Pretty basic stuff. But the thing is, like everything else in the human body, uh, you know, I talk often about moving away from automatic pilot moving or even moving away from an automatic body and more, more into the stick shift. Let's control everything. And we kind of need to. We've, uh, you know, for those of us that have, have uh, embarked on this um, wonderful sport of golf, uh, it is really one of the most complex um, body actions to be able to perform consistently really is the trick you know consistently over and over and over again so there's there requires a lot of attention to our human body to make that happen so i want to start off with the feet because one of the things that i talk about is foundation and foundation having strength of foundation if you will that basically supports the entire structure and that foundation pretty much starts at the feet because that's the first point of contact with the ground and we have a, a, a ways of manipulating our own bodies to create more torque and strength. One of the things that yoga teaches us is um, this concept of rooting into the floor. So Brandon, you've heard that many, many times. Teachers use that kind of just like on and on, root yourself down to the floor. Well, what the hell does that even mean? How, do, how am I going to root myself down to the floor? Like, <laughs> like, how does that even work? Well, it does work and I'll show, I'm going to show you how. And it's really kind of cool. And it's really fundamental in having an understanding that, you know, like our feet traditionally or typically, I, would, I should say, uh, would be proportionate to our, to, to our height. So it supports our body weight. But if we happen to be a little bit top heavy or even too light, it's actually a problem because our weight shifts around too much. So we got to be able to control that. So I'm going to share a screen with you. I'm going to have a little chat and then we're going to demonstrate some of these different things by actually doing it. But I would like, and because we're recording this, this is actually great because you can refer back to it. I'm not going to go quick and it's not all that complicated, but I just want you to see it. So if you want to revert back to it, come back to the recording at any time. It'll be really good. So I'm going to share a screen with you guys. Okay. And um, the first one is, yeah, this is always great. This is me on in the yoga retreat <laughs> okay so i want you to have a look at this guy and i think that we could all agree he's got quite a bit of weight there on his shoulders and i think we can also pretty much agree that that weight uh that weight excuse me sorry guys this the siri thing has gone off siri stop Hang on. I had the Siri going on in my head. Sorry. Okay. All right. So what I was going to say, I think we can pretty much agree that, you know, the amount of weight that this guy is carrying, if he's just like haphazardly standing without conscious thought to the amount of weight that he's holding and how to keep his body upright and all that kind of stuff. Now he's a millisecond thinking, right? So because he's done this over and over and over again, with technique before he started to, you cannot load like this. Even if you're this strong, you can't load like this without really knowing how to do this, rooting into the floor. Okay, so let's work on this now. Next thing I'm gonna show you is this. This is the underside of your foot, the bottom. You see the big toe, the little toe, and the heel. This is intended to demonstrate points of uh, tension when you're standing. Many of us are really, uh, we pitch forward because if we're uh, carrying a bit too much weight, that weight pitches us forward. And then you're pitching uh, weight into your toes and not so much in your heels. And that creates an imbalance of movement. So if you're trying to move your, your uh, torso around without firmly being, being planted in these three sequences or three um, points, then you're going to have movement and a lot of it. And as soon, think about it this way. If your foot is flat onto the floor, as if I was like standing there beside you with my hands pushing down onto your feet, then you would say that that's pretty good contact, right? Right. And 
Now, if you don't have the contact of these three points equally, then what is going to happen is your foot's actually going to move. And that is considered to be a leaking, leaking of power or energy. When your foot is flat, as if I was pushing it down, you've got full power. You're pushing down and you're grounded. If you start to pull off and you're not doing it intentionally, because that's the other thing, it's okay to do it if you're doing it on purpose for a certain reason. But otherwise, if you're trying to stay grounded, you've got to keep these pressure points. So what I've done essentially over time is I've just kind of made a mental note. I create, I think about it, this is a simple triad. So I think about this as the triad of the foot. It's the big ball. So it's the big toe knuckle, the little toe knuckle, and then the heel. And I try, when we try and distribute weight in our mind's eye over this pattern, it diffuses the weight into the strongest part of the feet, which are the bony parts, and particularly the heel, okay? Because the bones, the leg bones are right on top of the heel, not the toe. You start putting too much weight into your toes, your ankles are going to suffer. And the, the, uh, the toes here, yeah, they're just like pretty looking things. That's about it, okay? Um, and they do other things, of course. Okay, next thing I wanna show you. So have a look at this slide. Which is the best to create a stable foot? Gripping, now this is the one that, um, I mean, this, no test here. This is the one that's the most um, favorable and you can see why. I'm going to show you another slide that shows a little bit better. But when you, this is what typically we do here. We curl our toes and we curl our toes because we're leaning forward. And so that the idea is to, to do that and it just screws the entire upper balance of the body. So if you are leaning forward a bit too much and you try and swing a golf club and make a rotational movement, look at, you know, there's just no stability there. And so the body is just gonna keep on doing its old funky thing the whole time. This is why I say golf starts at our feet. We gotta get this right, this is the foundation, and then we work our way up, okay? So let's keep going here. Okay, this is the action, gripping the floor, not, not toes curling. So what we're going to try and do, and this is also a bit of a challenge for us because how the hell do you do this? Well, you keep your toes flat, you contract the underside of your foot and some other muscles above, and that's what we're going to play with. This right here is the concept of grounding and rooting. This is how you move your foot and the muscles within it to create that action. And look at what's happening here. Toes down flat, but then you pull back and the heel, you think you can't even move your heel, right? So how do you do it? Well, well, we'll try. And then let me show you the overall. So here's the concept of how this works. Okay, there's your pelvis. Glutes are in the back, big, huge butt muscles. And then the stuff here on the inside of your leg. Now, so you, when you're doing this action here, of pulling the toes back and heel forward. At the same time, you are pulling and contracting everything up. And at the same time, you are turning out. And if you don't do this, then the tendency is for the knees to buckle and cave in like, um, uh, like a knock kneed type of a look. So what happens then in that particular case, if you're not doing this, this muscle here takes over, the glutes relax, and the biggest part of your, muscle, uh, of your body, the strongest muscle group, which is right here, goes soft on you. Now, imagine if this goes soft, this big, huge, massive thing goes soft, and this thing kicks in. What do you think is gonna happen to this guy? Those knees are gonna cave in, those shoulders are gonna go forward, he's gonna break his neck, it's like, you know what I mean? It's not gonna happen. So what you can see, what he's doing here, and I'm gonna go a little bit closer. It's really important. His feet are roughly about shoulder width apart. So he's gone a little bit wider than most people because he's going pretty deep. And this is another thing. There's no right or wrong for this. When you're squatting or doing any type of movement like this, you gotta find the position that works well for your body type. Every, uh, everybody's uh, ball and socket is a little bit different. And you can see his feet are turned out slightly. 
his knees are not caving in, they're also turning out. Okay, and this is how he's creating that grounding position. Makes sense, right? It's just a bunch of stuff pulling in there. So you either got the right stuff pulling or you got the wrong stuff pulling. <laughs> you know, and, then, and to to have the right stuff pulling, that gives you the right control, right? That basically then you can control the stuff that you're supposed to control. Okay. So let me just uh, switch a couple of things around again. And uh, why also uh, bare feet are so important because there's no way you can do this. You, I, you can do it with shoes on for sure. For sure. You can do it. I was going to say you can't do it. Of course you can do it because they're really the, all the activation is happening here, but it's better to do it when you're uh, barefoot and even off a yoga mat onto the uh, like floor at first. So what you're going to do it, to start off with, let's get the feet roughly about shoulder width apart and the toes face forward, okay? And now you're going to just allow the knees to cave in. Press your knees forward a little bit. And then you're going to come out. Notice my knees are, I'm just straightening the knees out, but they're still caving in. Now, I feel this right here, my hip, because I'm, I'm actually turning my thighs in. And then I'm going to try and turn the thighs out. And that's squeezing the bum here. Okay, a little bit of movement there. Now just hold for it. Let's start with the foot. Okay, so with the feet, uh, here's, let's just do this for balance. You're going to take your arms to the side and make a couple of fists. This is great for balancing. And you just extend the arms straight at the elbows and it's like pushing the fists out to the side. Now rock your body weight side to side. So let's just roll side to side a little bit. And notice if you can do this with control, because ultimately that's what we're, we're trying to get to. So any kind of like a awkward movement or funky movement, we want to do it like with control. So even this at first, you know, you might not have control and that's okay. We need to have like, seriously, optimal control is like the same control of our feet as we do in our hands. I mean, that's what our ancestors did, of course. And we don't do that because our shoes protect us. Okay, so this is just to get to, Feel the weight. Now feel the weight come into the center, lift the toes up. I want you to lift all 10 toes as best you can. Okay. Now you should feel the balls of your feet on the floor surface or wherever you are, right? So press the big knuckle in as the toes up and try and press the little knuckle. I actually have a hard time doing it. My, my little knuckle is up and then press into your heel. So all I have here is the big knuckle and the heel. And then I'm gonna rock my weight side to side now. Ooh. A little bit tipsy here. Okay. And come back to the center and put the toes down. Now, don't grip the toes. So the toes are just very lightly touching, just like a placeholder. Like think about a, a sheet of paper being slipped under the toes, very, very light. More weight into the balls of the feet. Now with my toes down, I can feel the little toe or the little ball. And then I'm thinking about the, uh, that triangle. So the triad of the underside of the foot and trying to press equal weight into both sides. Now I'm gonna lean forward. Notice what I'm doing. I'm gripping now with my toes. So I'm trying not to do that. Lift the toes, stay onto the balls as you lean forward and then come back onto your heels. Lift the toes, just a tiny little bit. Lift your foot, tiny little bit, and then forward and back and yeah, forward and back. Just try not to grip the toes too much, okay? Okay, good stuff. Just take a break for a sec. Okay, move the toes around. Okay, you could spend hours just doing this stuff and it really is foundational. So it is quite important to do. We won't spend hours on it, but we're gonna spend a little bit of time on it just because it is quite good to do. Now, the other thing that happens because of the protection of our uh, shoes, is all the connective tissue, all the stuff I was showing you in there is really it, like it just, it doesn't move because the shoes are protecting us a little bit too much. So we want to create some movement here where we can actually feel our feet. Okay, so we need to be able to feel the toes now flat. Then pull the toes back towards your heel and your heel forward towards your toes. You can take the arms to the side or just bring them onto your waist for now. So as soon as I start to do that, I start to feel contraction in my legs. Even though in my mind's eye, I'm trying to shrink my foot, if you will, like the heel coming forward, the toes coming back, I'm engaging it through here. 
And then I start to turn my knees out a little bit. And now I feel it here. And then relax it, just relax it. Relax it to step right off of it. So I want you to feel what it's like when we start to tense up and when we just relax it. So relaxing, we're just kind of hanging around like we did, whatever, right? Now, I'm gonna get a little bit wider and I'm gonna turn the toes out slightly. So the idea is to, this, I'm going, this is the opposite of collapsing. I'm going to come out. So I'm turning out the whole time. Okay, first start with your feet. Toes back, heels forward. So start that action and then start to contract the, up the entire chain of the leg. Start to turn the thighs out a little bit. So think about this pubic space here. You're opening it up, just like a book. Open it up by squeezing the back. Take the arms to the side. Now rock your weight side to side. Everything's contracted. Now do some circles. This should feel different. If it's not quite there, then we're just gonna play with it for a little bit. So do some circles. And can you control this entire chain of activation the whole time? Okay, and just relax that, take a quick break. Okay, so the idea is again, it starts at the bottom, works its way up, and that gives you that strength to be able to do these side shifting movements that we have to do in our pelvis. Because if you do these movements, for instance, when we swing in this direction and I slide this way, if I don't have that grounding action, I'm going to do this and then I'm leaking power, tons of power versus being flat and then coming through and then finishing it off again, power. And it's only at the very end that we actually move off of it. So the idea is this contact, if you will, think about it like, I don't know, like a, a glue to the surface, a magnet on magnet that where your feet are just planted like that, but you've got the whole thing working its way up. So it starts at the feet, but then it starts to work its way up into that external rotation. Okay. I'm gonna test that out a little bit by putting some weight across it. Okay, I'm gonna to turn to the side and here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, same foot position, leg position. I'm gonna draw the toes back, heel forward, start turning out a little bit. This time, make it those fists, arms out. And I'm just gonna bend, not even so much my knees, I'm sending my hips back and that causes the knees to bend. So like a squatting position really paying attention to that triad of pressure and then come on up again. So you, at no point should you feel this into your knees at all. And I've got really bad knees and I can carry a lot of weight when I squat and not because my knees are overly strong, it's because of the, the position I have and the technique of squatting. We need to fire these big guys up. The glutes must fire the whole time. It's essentially what keeps the torso upright, those muscles. So try this a few times. And take a quick break. Okay, good stuff you guys. That's kind of the lesson portion of the day. We're gonna get into some more movement, just some general movement stuff. Richard, you were doing some of the good stuff at the beginning, so we're gonna move into that. Uh, any questions before I get going, guys? Are you good to go, Brandon? No, that, that's good. I like it. Love it. It's, um, you know, it's it's critical, right? We talk about it in, in our golf lessons all the time, right? You're trying to get it that way back. And if you don't have those points, you can't get there. So, Yeah, yeah. It's really quite interesting. Even for me, to, one of the other things that uh, makes this challenging is one, if you're not accustomed to doing this type of exercising and this type of particular body movement it's a little bit challenging and don't there's nothing wrong with you it's it's all of us who are like that it's the brain body connection the mind has to not the mind the brain has the physical brain has to figure out which muscles to relax and which muscles to engage in order for these movements to happen so one of the ways to do it as well is when you're just standing here without actually moving your feet just create this external rotation so the the foot does you know, the top of it moves a little bit, but you're trying not to move the bottom of the foot. So you internally rotate, externally rotate. Internal, 
external. And it all happens from here. When the knees are straight, it's happening from here. You're just basically turning your leg this way and it's all happening right that hip socket here too. You need a lot of range of motion right in this hip socket. We need really healthy hips. So in, out, in, out, in, out. You can see what's happening with the leg here. In, out, in, out. And this is all happening pretty much from the glutes, except when it's coming in, it's happening from the inside stuff. Okay, check that out. Good stuff. Just do a little bit of a stretch now. <laughs> Just a Get a bit of a side body stretch. We're doing all this stuff here. So lift up and let's go over to one side. Now here too, really important here. You're going to contract the muscles on the left, relax the muscles on the right. A nice stretch. And let's do the other side. Now notice what's happening with your feet, okay? So same thing here. Like if I'm doing this, is my foot coming up? No, I want both feet really firmly planted. This is upper body stuff being supported by me being rooted into the floor. Now, come back to center. We're gonna just clean that up a little bit. Bring your hands together, interlace them and press the palms forward so that the elbows are straight. Now we lift the arms straight up and overhead. All right, now, mindful of your feet, you're going to press the hands. This is like a push-pull. You're going to push into the floor and pull up to the ceiling, okay? So you're pushing down to the floor, extending the arms up to the ceiling, up nice and high. Keep equal weight into both feet. Now you're gonna to tip to the right. Put more pressure into your left foot. Keep going, how far can you go? Now, more pressure into the left foot, stand up. Keep putting more pressure into the right foot as you tip to the left. Ground your right foot down. Keep going though to the left upper body. Back to center. I'm going to do that again. Right side, put more weight into your left foot. Turn both feet outward, okay? Remember that turning out of the legs. Look up, even twist a little bit. Ooh, that feels good. Back to center. And over to the other side. I'm really pressing my hands up to that ceiling, trying to get length here. Keep going, keep going. Come back to center, just drop the arms for a moment, give the arms a little bit of a break. So you can see that stuff down there has got to support everything up here. It just, there's no way around it. Otherwise you're tipping and slipping and moving in all different directions. Okay, now let's play with that a little bit more. This time, cross the right leg in front of the left. Same thing applies. Even in this position, I'm externally or outwardly turning the whole leg. Press your feet down. Lift the arms back again. Let's uh, interlace the fingers. Go up. Now, same thing. I'm going to tip to the right. Notice any movement. Keep going. Back to the center, slowly and with full control. If you're firmly rooted, the upper body should just be doing a little bit of a tip over to one side, nice stretch. Both feet firmly planted into the floor and no movement. Then you come back to center, drop the arms, take a quick break, switching the legs, and let's see what the other side is like. Line the edges of the feet, the outer edges of your feet, lock your thighs together, but then I start to externally rotate. So even though my thighs are together, I'm trying to open up this pelvic space. So I'm squeezing my butt, pressing the feet down, drawing the toes and heel together like we did. I'm gonna go right back up again. Keep your rib cage down. It's the arms that are lifting here. So belly stays down, tip to your left. And look up. Avoid looking down, okay? You're gonna lean forward and fall. Look up. Or even up to where you're actually, uh, where the hands are, even better. Up through center, full control. And then you're gonna to tip to the right side. Woo. So I find that I was more stable with the other leg position than I am in this leg position. So that's kind of the work, right? trying to balance out, but noticing also some deficiencies. Back to center, 
and drop the arms and take a quick break. All right, little sip of water, everybody. Good stuff. All right, all with me so far? Good, and so the next thing, of course, uh, that's two feet, what happens when you're a one? <laughs> right, what happens when you're a one? More balance required. Okay, let's see what we can do with that, by the way. Arms to the side, look straight ahead. Now you're gonna to start to put more pressure into the left foot as you lift the right heel. Get that right heel super light. The foot becomes really light, but the right big toe is still touching the floor until I just go right to that very edge. Balance. Good stuff. Notice how much weight is in your left foot. Notice if the toes are pressing down. Can you lift the toes on the left foot and press into the knuckles of the feet into that? triangle shape. Okay, release, good stuff. Balance out now, put equal weight into both feet. The bottoms of the feet draw back, the heels go forward, turn the legs out, start to put more of that tension and pressure into the right foot. And if you notice, when I lift my heel, there's no body movement because everything's supported right here. My body doesn't need to move. I'm isolating the movement of just the heel lifting. Lift, lift, lift until you just reach the big toe, the tip of the toe, and then root the right foot down. Good stuff. Make sure you're breathing. And lower down. Okay, really good points of observation. I'm going to try and just do some circles with our foot now and see how we are on the balance side of things. Again, hands can come off or arms to the side or onto your hips, whatever you want. And what I'm gonna do here is just lift up that right heel and start to roll onto the outside of the foot, then the heel, then the inside edge, then back to the front again. So I'm doing full circle with just the foot, but it's moving all the way up into the hip right into really deep into the hip because I'm trying to make it really big here, really big and slow. So half speed, make sure when you're doing body movements like this, that it's half speed. Otherwise you kind of miss the whole work really because you bypass a lot of deep ranges of motion. Okay, so this time I'm going to go flat and go to the inside of the heel back and to the outside. So it's just the other direction, but I'm still maintaining this contact with the the foot and floor surface. Okay, good stuff. And now we do the other side. So again, balance off, equal weight. Drop the arms, get a little heavy there. And then I'm going to lift the left heel, roll to the outside of the foot. And I can already tell it's a little bit buggier on this side. It does not flow as nicely not as smooth, so I'm gonna slow it down and try and be mindful of the circular motion. So if I can't do it quick, I certainly you know, don't wanna do it quick and I wanna slow it down so I can manage and control the movement. Okay, good stuff. And let's go to the other side. So in, heel, and then back full circle in this direction. And we'll do that a couple of times. Okay. Another really good way to do this, I'm just going to go off camera for a second. Let's see if I have one of um, my little props here that I can show you. Hopefully I have one handy. I'm just going to take a quick second. Let's see if I have one. Do I have one? Do I have one? Yeah, well, I sort of have one. Yeah. Okay. So the idea here is um, a great way to find some definition in the understanding of what it's like to crunch the foot that way is to use a ball. It's a little bit big. I was actually looking for something half the size. You can get these small little rubber balls. And if you put it pretty much, yeah, see it's too big, uh, but if you take those small soft balls and you put it right around the arch, you can actually feel the arch space kind of contracting a little bit. And that's what gives you that contraction 
of the foot rooting down. So this is a great thing to do for that type of activation. And the other thing that I want us to try and do is just to get some strength here into the uh, calf muscles because it controls this movement, okay? So let's just do this. Take the arms up, lift the heel, and then lift the other heel. So lift and lift and lift and lift. Just lift your heels. Oh, good stuff, lift your heels. Also really good here for leg and foot strength. Arms just create a little bit of resistance here. Lift, lift. So you're trying to make this like ninja, like walking, like really soft, full control. When you've got a lot of control over the musculature of the body, you can move stuff like really gently and easily. Not clunky. Okay, slight movements, good stuff. Okay, bring the arms down. Now we're gonna lift them just to give a bit of a break and then lift the arms back up again. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach up to the ceiling. At the same time, I'm gonna see if I can lift my heels all the way without having the heels flare and go apart. So you try and keep them in, this, in the same position as you have them when they're on the floor, but lift the heels all the way up. So this time we're on the knuckles, and the toes, of course, crunching a little bit. And then you come down. So you're going to repeat that. This is how you're going to strengthen your foot. Up and down. Up and down. Lift the arms up. Look up. And then lift the heels up. So you go up and you go down. Just like a bicep curl. Up, down, up, down. Same muscles of the feet. Up, down, and up and down. But you're trying to do it with control. Often what happens here is that the heels come apart. If the calves are a little bit weaker, or we don't have control. The other way to do that, also as a prop, if you're finding that, I can't quite see you guys, so it doesn't really matter, but you can bring a ball to the heels, lift the arms, and then do the same thing. Press the ball in with your heels so the heels don't flare out, and then you lift and lower, lift and lower, and repeat and repeat and repeat. And you'll do about 12 of them. And then you take a break for about 10 seconds. Then you do another 12. So probably about four sets. And if you could do it every other day or every day, it's all good. And really strengthen and give you a lot of control over that space. Okay, good stuff. Have a sip of water. And then we're going to get onto the floor. Still working on the concept of... Um, mm. Hang on, maybe one sec, just before we go, let's just balance a little bit and see how we feel balancing because balancing is pretty cool. I try and work on it a lot. And I, by the way, as we get older, one of the most challenging things is we start to lose our ability to balance. So we definitely have to keep that going. And a lot of that is the core integration. Let's get into about uh, shoulder width apart, maybe hip distance, whatever feels good here. We're not squatting. We're just going to lift one leg up. So what I'm going to do here is, again, arms can go to the side or you can come onto your hips and try and lift one leg and then hold with the leg high. Try and just balance here for a moment or so and then lower the leg down and switch to the other side. Just see how that feels. Do it slow, a couple seconds, not too long. And think of doing everything half speed, okay? Half speed. Nice and slow. No need to rush. And it doesn't also need to be fancy. Like it just does not. We just want to balance. Okay. Now this time we're going to hold it up. Look straight ahead and just hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Let it go. And this time I'm going to come back up again and hold this other one for five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let go. Now this one's going to be similar ish. The right hand is going to rest on your right knee. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to send your knee up into the hand, and the hand is going to resist and press down. Hand to knee. 
flex the foot so you're not pointing, you're flexing. And then you lift the knee up, press the hand down, but the body's not moving. So this is an internal contraction. And then you try and hold and balance. Look straight ahead and you're holding for five, four, lift the knee to the ceiling and push the hand down to the floor. Let's go. Tight here on the belly, three, two, and one with control, relax the leg. You feel that Brendan, right there? <laughs> you bet. Okay, now this is a very active movement. Internally, I'm cranking stuff up here. I'm lifting the knee up and I'm pushing the hand down. I'm about a five or six out of 10. So I'm not killing this thing, but I certainly feel my core engaging. And this time that right foot is just planted straight down and I'm turning it out a little bit and crunching heel to front and front to back. So solid and solid here, really solid. Push down, lift up and hold that for five, four, three, two, and let it go. That's it, nice. Okay, now we're gonna try something a little bit funkier. <laughs> Brendan, give this a shot. Same thing, but a little bit of movement. So I'm going to lift, but this time I'm gonna maintain this contact, okay? I'm gonna maintain the contact of hand to knee. The left arm goes up, but I'm going to pivot forward a little bit. Touch the floor and then come up. Go right back down. See, we'll try and manage that. Doesn't matter what it looks like, just try and do it with some control. I'll do one more. And then release that. We're gonna do the other side, see what that's like. Woo, that's kind of cool, right? A little bit different. Jeez. Yeah. The more of this awkward stuff we can do with some, <laughs> uh, you know, with some percentage of success, the better off we are. And the more we start to normalize this stuff. So we want to make this awkward stuff more normal. Yeah. Okay, same thing. Hand to knee, flex the foot, right arm up. The pressure here continues between the two surfaces as I tip my body weight forward, touch the floor, and then come on up with some sense of control here. Full reset, and then repeat. Three times, four, five times, whatever you wanna do. So this leg feels pretty good going through the glute. The tendency here is to tip forward. Send more weight into your heel so you're not crunching your toes. Oh, there we go, just lost mine. Too much talking. One more. And this is my last one. Press your pelvis back, more weight into your heel, light on the toes. And then release that last one. Whew, okay. Now let's go down the floor. Down onto the floor, I, my, feel, my glutes are pretty warmed up. So we're going to get into a little bit of glute work here by doing glute bridges. Really important. Before we do that, let's kick into a pelvic tilt. I'm just gonna move my arms so you can see. I'm going to really arch my back here. And this is a forward or an, um, anterior pelvic tilt where you can get some space between your lower back. Now I'm gonna crunch the abs tight and then that softens the back into the floor, okay? So now I'm crunching. And from this position, that's when I press into my heels or even that triangle of the foot, turn the toes out a little bit, don't let the knees come in and then you lift up and you keep on lifting until you go right between your shoulder blades. Should be super light on your toes here. And then you lower down 
notice what happens when you lower do you get that arch again and if you do reset it so it's flat then you lift the pelvis up that way you engage the glutes not your lower back so you want to stay away from lower back engagement you're going to hurt your back straight spine press it to your heels and then lift up lift right until you feel that space between your shoulder blades and then you come down now initially when you start this you can have the arms down and press into the floor with your hands you can have the elbows onto the floor and you press to lift up eventually you're trying to do this through your entire core with your arms up and off the floor with no assistance from the arms at all so it would look more like this just like that without the arms pushing in all core work and then we really start to crunch this out you want to go high hold it come down and go high and hold it repetition and we want to do about 15 of these full range of motions so you really squeeze your butt lift the pelvis to the ceiling and then lower i'm going to do another five four three two on one keep the pelvis up right pelvis up 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 keep pushing the pelvis to the ceiling but now lift your heels off the floor both heels lift you can bring your heels back a little bit further if you like if that feels better lift your heels and then lower them down so the pelvis stays high it's just the heels that lift and lower lift lower this is pilates stuff you guys really good so bum squeezing that keeps the pelvis high and then the heels lift and lower to create some strength again draw the foot back if you need to you want to get a little more height there you can certainly do that keep your knees apart now i'm lifting my arms up but you can have your arms down if you like but for me it's arms up so not any arm engagement here at all this is just legs and core doing all the work for another five four three two last one lift your heels up now just pulse the pelvis little uh pulses okay little pulses pulse pulse don't lower too much top this is top end range of motion stuff here and if you're sliding like me just come back a little closer to your heels and pulse pulse and pulse we're pulsing about 30 seconds here the bum should be just firing up here quite a bit Keep your spine straight, otherwise the lower back's gonna get a little tender. And last 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, I got a legs there, one, last one, and then now come down. Okay, you can rock your legs a little bit side to side. You can draw the knees in closer to chest. That tends to neutralize the back quite nicely. Even with strong control over this, guys, it's still quite challenging to keep that lower back out of the equation for all of us, me included. But I have 80% more strength in the front, so it's managing to handle the 20% that the lower back engages. All right, the next movement is just going to work a different part of the glute. If we take the legs wider, say heels to the edge of the yoga mat, turn the feet out a little bit. Yeah, arms can be by your side, palms down, elbows can be down, arms can be up, whatever works for you. The idea, the same thing applies. Let's flatten the lower back. When that spine is straight, then the pelvis gets lifted. And this goes to the outside of the big glute muscles. And then we lower down and then we lift up and repeat. This is not so much about doing 12 or 15. It's about doing it for about 30, 45 seconds in that range. And you try and go up and down. So more technique based. So if you do 15 really good ones, it's much better than doing, you know, like 25 sloppy ones. So full range of motion. And we go up and down. I want to go all the way till I feel some space between my shoulder blades and then come down. And then go right back up again for about 10 seconds. All right, lift your hips up, keep them up. And we're just going to move the heels again. So this wide legged position, I'm lifting. If you can't lift both, lift one at a time. One and the other, one and the other, right? Otherwise, just both at the same time. 
Lift your hips, lift your heels, the hips stay up. So the hips should not be lowering to the floor because if your bum is squeezing tight, it'll keep your hips up in this position. And another 10 seconds. Adjust your body in your time if you need to. And now lift your heels, lift your hips, and we're going to pulse for 30 seconds or so. Little pulses, keep those knees going out and away from each other. And then we just pulse and pulse and pulse, pulse, end range of motion, pulse. You should feel the bum quite a bit. Another 10 seconds, pulse high, pulse five, four, three, do last one, push up, push up, 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 and lower the pelvis down. Yeah, rock your knees from side to side or draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself that little rocky motion. Roll the legs around if that feels good. Whatever you need to to just calm the lower back if your back's kicked in. All right. And we'll get to one more and then we'll start to wind it up. This is a butterfly leg glute bridge. The legs go wide, the bottoms of the feet come to touch. I'm gonna to scooch myself forward a little bit, bring the heel, heels a little bit closer to my butt. Now the idea here is the same. Flat lower back, keep the knees apart. Do not allow them to come in. So this is active engagement. It reinforces everything that we've done today with that external rotation. So for me to externally rotate, rotate my legs, it keeps the legs open in this butterfly leg position. And then flat lower back, and then I lift up. So I'm pressing into the feet, the bottoms of the feet, and then squeeze the bum, lift up, and then lower down, and then repeat for about 30 seconds, 35 seconds. If you wanna hold on to the yoga mat like I'm doing, that's fine too. I'm sliding all over the place. So sliding is a common problem here. So we, we can hang on to the yoga mat. It's totally fine. Now, as I lift my hips, the knees, my knees are coming in. So I'm going to press them actively out and lift my hips higher. This is the active technique. Avoid the knees from collapsing inward as you send the pelvis up. Super good here. Now, just a few more seconds. Now you're gonna lift your hips up all the way, keep the knees apart, and you're going to pulse for 30 seconds. End range of motion pulses. These are just little pulses. So you're not coming down too low, only maybe an inch or so, pulse and squeeze. It's more about that final little squeeze, end range of motion, like when you're building that bicep and you wanna get that big pump. This is what's happening here, a nice big pump, lots of blood going into the glutes. So if there's nothing else gang, we are lifting and firing those glutes up today. Okay, bringing them back alive. Here we go for the last 10. Keep pulsing, nine. Squeeze, 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 eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one, big squeeze, lift your pelvis up and lower down. Ah, okay, both knees drawing to chest. And then we're gonna come up and whoop. Reset all my ear stuff has fallen apart. <laughs> all right, gang, that is it. That's our movement class for today. I think that's more than enough stuff to get you going for the next little while. Please uh, circle back to this recording. So you can have a look at all that technical stuff that we talked about and practice, 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 practice. The more you practice, by the time you do this over the course of the off season, you will be miles ahead when we get back to on season. That's what this off season stuff is training is really, really amazing to do. So you just keep doing it, keep doing it. There's no right or wrong ish. As long as it feels good and you're not hurting yourself, just keep on doing it. And always refer back to our recordings for any of this information. You can also reach out to me directly if there's something specific, it's not quite working out. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, Lou. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you in the academy this, uh, this month. Thanks, Lou. All right. Have a great week, everyone. Take care. Bye.